FDA advisors are meeting today to discuss the future of COVID vaccines here in the United States. The plan is to move to one shot a year. Just one of the health headlines that we are following this morning as we say hello to Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White. Thank you for joining us as always, Dr. Winter. Good I want to get to you, the Mark. latest news on COVID vaccines, which indicates that the bivalent Pfizer or Moderna vaccines work pretty well against the dominant strain of COVID now circulating in America. Just how well is it working? Yeah, this is great news. Just came out yesterday. First, you know, this XBB new variant, it's sweeping the country. It's the most dominant strain in the Northeast. It's about to become the most dominant strain in the South, including Texas. And the bivalent vaccine came out Last fall, this is both Pfizer and Moderna, and the recent studies say that you are half as less likely to get sick with this new variant if you've had this vaccine. Not only that, you're twice as likely to die if you don't get it and get that sick with it. So this is a great vaccine for the new variant that's out there. The problem is only 15% of Americans have gotten this new vaccine, the bivalent one. So great opportunity to knock this new variant out if we'll just go ahead and get the vaccine, Mark. Well, let's talk about case count. What are we seeing from the numbers? Well, indeed, a lot of COVID cases, the most of them have been going down the last couple of weeks. That's true. There's still lots of it out there. I think the best case we can make for this bivalent vaccine is that if you've got an immune system that's not quite up to snuff, if you're taking medications that could lower your immunity, like steroids or chemotherapy drugs, if you have a weak heart or weak lungs or if you're just older and frail, you really ought to strongly consider this. And on the other hand, if you're not in those categories, however, you have friends or relatives who are, you might want to get the vaccine just to keep from spreading it to them. You mentioned before folks who need to get the vaccine. I think for even those that are really aggressive about staying on schedule, it can be confusing sometimes keeping up. I know the FDA is meeting today to discuss the frequency of those vaccines. Are we looking at an annual shot like you'd get every fall with the flu vaccine? Yeah, it's a big debate, Mark, and I've seen people on both sides, very bright people on both sides of this. The issue is that the COVID variants change more rapidly than the flu does. So you might think, well, that might not be a good way to whole year. Also, we've learned that uh, antibody levels tend to go down at four months, and they're pretty much low after six months of a vaccine or having COVID. Now, does that mean you're still going to have a problem? Well, we're not sure about that, but it kind of makes sense that we might want to consider that. On the other hand, folks are tired of vaccines a lot of resistance out there. So I'll be interested to see what they say and actually what their discussions are and what the logic they use when they come up to re recommend six months, four months, or a year. I can't wait to hear what they say. Okay, well, shifting gears a bit, let's, let's talk about wheat. I know it's a major part of the diet for many folks in the United States, and it comes in a couple of forms. You've got whole grains, you've got refined grains. If you're looking at the box and you're saying, hey, I should be eating one of them, I'm not really, not really sure, what is the difference? So whole wheat grain is milled and then is processed to become flour, and that's a refined grain. And studies have shown that when they do that process, you lose some of the nutrients, some of the vitamins. So whole grain is better, not just with wheat, also with rice. Brown rice is better than white rice. So they looked at population studies, and where populations mainly eat whole grains, it looks like they do better. In fact, they have less heart attacks and strokes than if they eat refined grains. The American College of Cardiology has gotten way behind this, and they say, yes, indeed, we want to push whole grains. They're better for your heart, better for your circulation than the refined grains, which a lot of us today eat. Is this one of the situations you want to eat the grains, but you really need to look for the whole? <laughs> well put, Mark. I'll have to remember that one. Thank okay. you.